I uh, heard someone say, uh, you know, this was years and years ago, uh, that the first thing you need to do, and you know, it's, you know, it's step one and Alcoholics Anonymous, mm. is admit that you have a problem. So yeah. in a more broad definition, the, your first step towards, you know, recovering from anything is to admit the truth first to yourself and then to someone you trust. And I, I want to put an emphasis on somebody you trust. Yeah. It's like when you're dealing with, you know, traumatic experiences or even just emotionally, emotionally difficult things, you need to be very choosy who you reveal that information to, you know, and, and that's part of vulnerability. You know, we get that sense of vulnerability because we're, we know we're opening up a, you know, a sore spot. And there are a lot of people, even people like in your circle, that when they see a source, source spot, the first thing they want to do is poke it. There are just oh, people yeah. out there that are like that. Or diagnose and medicate it too. Yeah, or, yeah, that's another odd danger that I'm, I'm becoming more, more aware of quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. You know, you really need to trust that person. It's like, so mm -hmm. even if, say, you know, an example, it's a therapist. That's why you might see a therapist for a couple of months. And not really talk to them about what you actually went there for. You know, that's building rapport, getting to know the person, really feeling them out. It's like, because if you don't trust them, you can't go to the places you, you need to go. And a, an expression I like is that, you know, traumatic things or emotionally difficult things, they grow in the dark. Yeah. You know, to mean that the more isolated you become and the more you push things down, and the less willing, like even a person is uh, to look at it themselves without even revealing it to somebody else. It's like the more they kind of fester and grow and the more odd things can happen, the more symptomology can appear. That's when physical ir illness might manifest itself, yeah. you know, and I've also heard that's how, you know, mental illness as a generality be described is that as that builds inside you, the more it grows and, and you're also not a static condition. So you might have something very difficult to happen in your childhood that nobody's helped you with, or you haven't looked at for whatever reason. It's like, and then you might have something really horrible happen to you in your adolescence. It's like, and that goes on top of it. It's like, then, you know, as a young adult, you're going to have other struggles and that goes on top of that. And it, it stacks and stacks and it grows and it grows. And when someone finally, you know, blows out at the weakest point, you know, we call it schizoaffective disorder or obsessive compulsive disorder or whatever diagnosis gets attached to it. It's like, really, that's just the weakest point in the genetics of that person. For whatever reason, they, their circuits blew out there. It's like the system just couldn't handle it anymore. It's like, and I think that's, that's probably my preferred conceptualization of, of you know, a, a mental illness, you know, to use that term. Oh, yeah. I mean, and this is something I've witnessed over the years as a psych nurse. By the time get people get to us, there has been things that have been that have not been addressed and have been building up for years and decades. So what we see in this snapshot of when we first meet a person is like this spiritual crisis, this dam opening up. And it's not to simplify that mental illness is just only caused by trauma, but it is trauma is a huge factor, just the same as um, there are many other factors, but that's a big one. And so when they come to you to that place, yeah, this has been going on for years, whether it's domestic violence, physical abuse, sexual abuse, toxic family dynamics. Um, and these things happen through like no fault of our own. There's other things that happen as an adult, whether it's a car accident or losing a job or a breakup or somebody dies in your family that you were close to, like your grandparents, pain and suffering happens to all of us through no fault of our own. And many times people actually blame themselves when, especially with domestic abuse and physical abuse and sexual abuse. But by the time people get to us and, you know, I'm doing an intake or an interview and I'm listening to their stories and I'm thinking, how did you actually survive all of this? 
Like, how are you functioning in the world today after being through everything that you've been through? So that idea of asking people, you know, like what happened to you, not what's wrong with you. Psychiatry in, in, psychiatry in the current state asks, what is wrong with you? What do we diagnose and medicate? Whereas if you look at it from a different perspective and say like, what has this person gone through? Everything that they've been through, their brain, their life experiences. And what you see in that moment is in that, if you look at it from that context, it's a different thing than mental illness. It's a crisis. It's a spiritual crisis. It's a normal reaction to abnormal, challenging, painful, difficult experiences in life. And that is one of the things that I absolutely hate about psychiatry is that those experiences are not honored and respected and seen for what they are, but instead medicalized and pathologized and medicated. Yeah, and it, that, that type of approach, you know, that medicalization and that idea of, you know, what's wrong with you instead of what's happened to you also strips away the dignity and the, and the nobility of a person's suffering. It's like, you know, and, and the, the dignity and the nobility isn't, isn't to suffer. It is the perseverance in the face of suffering that that person, you know, who's sitting in front of you telling, you know, giving their, you know, their story and their history. And you're going just like, Jesus Murphy, like, how, how do you, how did you get up? How did you even get here? Like, how are you functioning? Like, Mm -hmm. and, and you, and you, we still hear harrowing stories consistently where it's just like it's unbelievable the resilience that people have Mm -hmm. it's like and and that it just strips all all the dignity out of it well the thing is people get denied within their families first you know the and gaslighted and dismissed and then they go to the mental health system where the same thing happens essentially so it's like insult to like injury. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely true. And 